Hey everybody, another day in the garage today, and big surprise, we got another radio install. Uh, this is going to be a little different than the last uh, last couple that we've done. Uh, this is going to be putting a GMRS uh, ham combination into a JK, uh, Jeep JK. One of the questions I get asked frequently uh, in doing these is, is uh, I have a CB antenna on there, can I use the CB antenna? And what about the cable? Well, the answer, no to the CB antenna. Uh, but the cabling, yes, you probably can. There's a couple of different ways you may have to, uh, a couple of different adapters you may have to buy to make that work. Uh, but we're going to show you here today uh, the antenna and the parts to make uh, to make this one work. We already got the coax run because he had a CB in it previously. So we're just going to reuse that uh, CB coax, uh, which is just fine for the, uh, for the ham GMRS setup. Um, and I'll show you the antenna and the, uh, the adapters that we have to make that work and then uh, give you an idea on how to do the rest of the install. So we'll take you along for this today. Back here on the back of the Jeep, you can see a pretty standard setup here. We got our coax running up to the bottom. We got a, a 3 8 stud mount. There's a quick release here for the, uh, for the CB antenna that's in here, but this mount is your pretty standard uh, CB antenna mount with a PL239 SO2, or yeah, SO239 connector here on the bottom and a 3 8 stud on the top. So the antenna we got is one of these, uh, you can see here, just one of these pretty standard uh, stainless whips uh, for GMRS. But it also has the, uh, instead of doing a Nemo mount, we did a, a similar SO239 connector. You can get them both ways um, so that you can just screw this on. And then what we're going to use to mount that is our simple uh, bulkhead uh, PL2 259 connector. So we're going to take this connector off here. This is just your standard uh, coax connection down here that's screwed into the bottom. We're just going to unscrew this. You can see we've got the same set of threads down there. We're going to unscrew this. We're going to pull this piece off and we're just going to replace it with one of these. Real simple, easy way to do this. Don't have to mess with a Nemo connector on this one. Uh, we'll put this panel mount in there, coax will screw up from the top, and antenna will screw on from the bottom. All right, we got the back door of the Jeep open just so we have a little bit more room to work here. Uh, we pulled the old mount off, and you can see our, uh, our connector is not going to fit through the hole. So, went over, grabbed the good old-fashioned step bit, uh, and we're just going to hog this hole out a little bit until we can get it to a, a big enough size to fit. This is something, unfortunately, you might have to do. Uh, it's just just kind of the nature of, uh, of adapting things uh, but this is actually a bracket we built so I have no problem uh, hogging out a little bigger hole in there so we'll get after it with the uh, with the step bit and make that fit I didn't figure you guys would want to watch me necessarily uh, drill uh, hog out a hole but we just hog that out a couple sizes bigger and now our connector fits in there no problem we'll put the uh, the nuts up from the bottom we'll get this squared up and then we'll just screw our antenna on there and connect our cable on the bottom and this part of the install will be done. There you go, about as easy as it could be. Cable hooked up to the bottom there, antenna screwed onto the top and this will uh, just unscrew off of there, real simple. I don't recommend tightening those down with a wrench. If you ever go through a car wash or something like that, want to pop this off real easy before you go through. You can just get out here and just unscrew that and it'll work just like a Nemo connection. Uh, you can unscrew that, run through the car wash, let everything kind of dry out a little bit, screw your antenna back on, and there you go. But pretty simple. Uh, get that antenna on there, and real time saver having the cable already run. Otherwise, we'd be fishing cable for the next hour to get that up to the front. But there you go. Yes, you can use your CB cable that's already there. Just want to make sure you get ends that match. And there are adapters and different things that you can make. Just about any combination work there. That was just the simplest way to take care of it on this Jeep. All right, here's the radio we've chose to run in this. This is a QIT uh, KT8900D. Neat little radio. This is actually, don't tell the FCC, this is actually a ham radio, but we're going to uh, program GMRS frequencies in this, and we're going to use this as GMRS radio. Uh, and then in the future, if he gets his ham license, this will also work as a ham radio. Um, so we're going to put that here. We're in the front seat of the Jeep here. And what we decided, right down here on the side of the console, uh, this fits. It's out of the way. It uh, doesn't affect 
his uh, driving doesn't hit his leg when we're driving, but still far enough forward we can move the seat forward uh, for his wife to drive. She's a little shorter. Um, and then the bracket on this, kind of a nice bracket. We have multiple mounting positions with this particular bracket. So we're gonna we're gonna just center things up, use the center set of holes. That way, if we need to move up or down, uh, we can move the bracket up or down on those holes without having to drill a new set of holes. And then there's a lot of options in the side for how the radio actually mounts to the bracket. So we should be able to get this tucked in here real nice, out of the way, uh, not affect his leg, but that's our next step. Drill some holes here and uh, run some screws in and uh, mount that bracket right there. Okay, here we are in the front, got the bracket mounted. You can see, use just some panel screws, some finished screws here. We got this screwed into the, the center of that center if you will. So if we need to, we can move this bracket up or down one set of holes. And there's plenty of holes in the side here. Didn't want to bore you with drilling, but I thought I'd show you. And then our radio, we're going to mount it in here this way. Uh, speaker will be on the inside. Shouldn't be a problem. If it is, we will turn it around. But this way the display looks uh, correct from the driver's seat. And then we got enough room down here to run our, our cable, our antenna cable in and our power cable. So the next step is... Uh, to run power fortunately this is exactly we already have our antenna run so we have our antenna cable that's already run right here somewhere there it is so our antenna cables already run up here so this will just come down and come in from the bottom we are going to run this hot all the time on the jeep so we're going to go straight to the battery on this so we've got some uh some wires to run but i'll show you on a jk uh Everybody, I think, knows about the pass-through and, and that kind of thing. But we'll show you kind of how the easiest way to run some wires are. We're going to have to splice some extra wire on here, but that's not a big deal. That's our next step. All right, back here, we're on the passenger side of the Jeep. Um, he's got some, uh, he's got a bolt-in cage here from Rock Hard uh, that's kind of in the way. You can see we've done, had to cut out the dash, do a bunch of modifications here. But that leaves our little, uh, our little pass through here exposed so this is just a piece of uh of uh wire we're going to use we're going to we're going to work out the insulation in here and there you go that's through the uh pass through simple as can be we'll uh, we got some more wires to run on another insulation later so we'll just use that for these wires now and we're actually going to have to fish down between here uh, because of this extra cage that's in here bolted in this is all quarter inch plate right here uh, and the dash is all cut out. So we're going to have to do a little fishing with our wires down here. This is going to be the worst part of the install. But we'll start here at the uh, at the battery side on this one and kind of work backwards because we don't have enough uh, don't have enough wire on our on our harness that came with our radio. So we're going to have to add wire anyway. This will just be the easiest way. We'll hook it up under the hood, uh, get things run. Not hook it up yet, but we'll get things run to positive negative terminals on the battery under the hood, and then we'll work our way backwards here. Okay, here on the passenger side again, you can see right here I've got that same rod. I've, I've fished it down through the bottom. We did a little change of plans here just to make our wires. And you can see where it popped out here. I'm going to uh, tape my wires on here. We're going to pull it up behind the dash right here until we pop out here. Then we're going to tape the end of our wires again to our, our fish tape here. And we're going to poke them through the hole from this side into the engine bay. Uh, that's going to be the easiest way to uh, to kind of do things here. So I just wanted to kind of give you an update. And then I've got some 16 gauge uh, dual stranded wire here. Uh, this perfect same kind of power cable that they use uh, in the harness. So we're just going to tape that on the end here. Pull it up behind the dash like I said. And we'll put it on the end of the wire again. And we'll push it through this way into the engine bay. And we'll show you on that side. Okay, we're on the front of the Jeep. You can see uh, under the cowl here, we could take this piece off. We need, oh no, this piece doesn't come off on the JK, sorry, that's on the JLs. But you can see it just, it just comes through here, no problem. Tuck it behind some other wire we can have. We're gonna run it, our wire right around here. But you can see, I just taped it at the end, stuck that through there on the, uh, on our fish tape here. Then we're gonna just make these up with some, just some plain old uh, eyelets. Make those up on the ends. And run this over and just attach it to our battery posts under here. Uh, I got plenty of options with these JKs. They have a lot of accessory mounting uh, posts under here. You can kind of see. Got plenty of options. So we'll do that. And then we'll uh, go back inside the cab and uh, start working our way over to the radio. Give you a quick update. We've been fishing some wires. So here's where we come out from our bulkhead. Or our, our pass through here. We did get it fished. Like I said, we started down here and fished it up through here. Now I just work the wire 
up behind here and into our glove box hole. So we got our, our tail our tag end hanging out here. And then down here, you can see this is our same bit of uh, eighth inch rod we've been using for a fish tape to uh, fish the wires through. And this piece of wire here, this is the uh, this is the cable that came with the radio. And it's just fished right back through here. We'll come up and around to this side. And you can see it hanging out here. That's the connector that the radio came with that plugs right into the radio. So it's hanging out down there. And all we did was cut th this, uh, this wiring harness came with a uh, cigarette lighter plug on it. We didn't want to use the cigarette lighter plug. So we just cut that off. And then we uh, taped that to our, you can see our eighth inch wire rod hanging out there. And we just used that as an easy way to poke it across over here to this side. Now, about here is where we're gonna join these up. Uh, I'm gonna figure out a way to, uh, we're gonna pull this through. We got plenty of uh, slack here, so we'll pull this through. So we got plenty to uh, to work with, but we'll, uh, we'll get all this tucked up underneath, up behind here. We're gonna run this up behind here and then up into our, up behind our dash and behind our, our glove box. But we'll make our connections somewhere right here with these wires, uh, get that connected to the harness and make sure we got plenty to go over and plug into the radio on the other side. Um, but I just want to give you kind of an update of where we're routing wires, how we're routing wires. I know that kind of gets overlooked sometimes in videos, but I wanted to show you that, uh, and that little, that's just a little eighth inch steel rod I had laying in the garage. I'm sure I got it at Lowe's or something uh, to use for a fish tape. And that made fishing those wires through there real easy. We could just tape them on, push them through, and uh, have it uh, have it come out there real easy. So we'll take these, we'll use some crimp connectors and some shrink tube, and uh, we'll make up some nice connections on that and uh, get that wiring tucked up in there. And then we'll go over and get the radio hooked up to everything and show you how this works. Quick little update under here. We've uh, got the radio mounted in place. We did have to move this bracket up one set of notches. You saw how there was three sets in this mounting plate. We did end up having to move this up just because of the connector here. Uh, this has got kind of a big connector on this particular cable. Um, it, it, down the road, we may... I, I've got the tools to put another end on this cable. Um, I just don't have any of the connectors right now. Uh, so down the road, we may actually take this connector off and put a little bit lower profile connector on uh, so that this can move a little better in here. Because right now, it's kind of tucked down in this little pocket and, and it's as low as we can get it in this bracket but we had to move it up just a little bit to get it to, to mount in that position but that's where the radio is going to sit is right there uh, the speaker is on the inside so we may be uh, doing a little check a little, little different on that may have to pull this it's this got so many options for pull it out just a little bit so you can get to the speaker a little bit better uh, or we may just end up turning it around uh, so the speaker blows in here this direction we're just gonna see when we get it going how it works um, then our connector right here like I said we still run under the dash there so we're gonna go do our connections up uh, our wiring connections I just wanted to get this at least soft mounted now for now uh, just to make sure our wires are where they need to be so we'll go uh, connect the wires up on the other side okay we're under the dashboard got our wires uh, getting ready getting them prepped here to uh to connect them but i wanted to show you something um this is your standard bullet connector most everybody's familiar with hard plastic on the outside has the metal tube on the inside i'm not a big fan of these um that you just never know really how good of a connection you're getting with that style connector it is nice that you can uh, that it is a little bit insulated uh, so you don't have to worry too much about about it contacting things but i prefer these little guys you can see i got a whole uh, kit of them here, but these are uh, these are basically the metal portion uh, by itself. It's an uninsulated connector, and I really like those because I can see exactly what's going on when I crimp that. Uh, there's no plastic uh, getting in the way. I know I can get a good solid crimp, not crimping through plastic to do it. And then I use shrink tube. I've got shrink tube that'll fit over that connector and insulate it, so I don't have to go with a, a a giant piece of shrink tube that will fit over this blue, you know, our, our typical plastic crimp connector. It's a nice small piece that just slides over that connector and uh, makes a really nice watertight connection with very little bulk. And I know using that crimp that I'm getting a good solid crimp because I'm crimping metal to metal 
and it, it, it I can inspect it very well because I don't have plastic in the way so I just wanted to show those that's a that's a crimp style I use uh, you do have to use shrink tube if you're doing it but uh, we got a piece of red and a piece of black shrink tube that will uh, slip over those before we crimp them and uh, so that we keep our color coding nice and you'll see I'll show you a, a shot when I'm done with this how uh, how slick these uh, these connections actually are when you get them done but I just wanted to show you that uh, my preferred method All right, midway through this here I just wanted to show you what the uh, what that crimp looks like when you do it with one of these uninsulated connectors you can see how that is just crimp solid uh, down in there very solid connection you can see I've got just so much easier to put these connections together and I got a piece of shrink tube here and it just I, I sized it so that it just barely big enough to slide over that connector we're getting a good solid connection and then to get that kind of connection highly recommend high quality set whoops see if we can get that in there you see there we go a good quality set of crimpers like this and you can see on here where it says non right here and it says insulated right here what that is, you can see this has got that kind of a little tooth in it. And that's what I use for these non-insulated connectors. That really bites down in there. gives you that really solid, no-nonsense connection. Back here, it's kind of just a, a, uh, a uh, I don't know, kind of a half-moon shape. That's for crimping our, our typical plastic insulated connectors. Uh, and it does a great job. These actually do a much better job than any of your cheap pliers do about connecting those and has actually changed my mind a little bit about them. I'm a little more confident using them when you have a good solid set of pliers like that. But that's what a good solid crimper set of pliers looks like. All right, there you have it. Crimped and heat shrunk connections there. You can see right here, you can see just a little bubble where the, uh, the connector is. You can actually see the outline of it under there. But you can see those connections aren't really any bigger, any bulkier than, than the wire itself. Makes for nice, just clean, easy to do, high quality, uh, watertight. That's got the glued, the good glue uh, shrink tube. So it's nice, uh, watertight, glued connection there with a good quality crimp. That'll, uh, that'll last for a long time with no issues. Under the hood here, just to give you a little recap on the wiring, here's our ground wire. We just kind of tucked everything across, ran it, ran it over here, we got our uh, positive wire hooked up here to this side, and then we just, you know, did the best we could to tuck these wires up out of the way, zip tying everything along the way, and you can see it just runs through the channel here and then run into the bay. Uh, I just wanted to give you that. We do have our connections hooked up now because our install is done, so we're going to go inside the Jeep and uh, we'll show you the radio. My favorite part of any radio install, peeling the label off the screen. I don't know why that's so satisfying to peel that off, but it is. You can see our radio's on here. I uh, just happened to be on the fourth channel here, so we plugged in the frequency 462550. Uh, happens to be channel 15. And Mike here, uh, when you hit it, you can see we transmit. And uh, we did already check this against a uh, another radio to make sure everything's working, everything's transmitting. Uh, worked just fine. So we know our, uh, our antenna's working. We got good range, good sound out of this. Uh, we are going to take this inside. I have a program uh, already set up for this style radio uh, in the computer. We'll use Chirp and, and program this radio via Chirp. Um, won't bore you with that part of it, but uh, there you go. There's an install on a JK. You can see how that sits there. Uh, turned out pretty good. We can still get the seat slid far enough forward uh, for a shorter driver. Uh, radio's out of his way. Doesn't bother him as far as sitting there. Uh, doesn't hit his leg too bad. Uh, we're going to go with this for right now. Uh, if not, we may, uh, you know, nice thing about doing doing stuff yourself is if we, we don't like where this is mounted, we find someplace else. We'll redo some wiring and remount it. But there you go. Pretty happy with the install. Uh, everything turned out great, so we're just going to get things buttoned up. Flip this around out here in the sunshine in the in the driveway. Hope you enjoyed that install on a, uh, a different, little different. I do a lot of Midlands, but this is a little different one. Uh, this one's going to be... Uh, like I said, I don't care what the FCC says. We're going to use this one on ham and GMRS frequencies, and and uh, it's going to work just fine. I have two of these radios. Uh, they make great uh, mobile mounts, uh, very versatile. So real happy with the install, real happy with the radio, and uh, catch you on the next one. Okay, here we are the next day, but to you on the video, probably instantly. Didn't like the mic down on the floor next to it, so we ended up ordering some cat six cable 
and routed it to here. Followed the same wires that we did to wire the radio. Went through the glove box, through, went up, went up through the A pillar, and then across, and then connected it here. And right here, we, we have our mic now with an easy reach to be able to grab it and speak.